Today, we're going to take a look at how Automate integrates with VMware through the use of the VIX API. Through the use of this VIX interface, we can integrate with various VMware solutions, including ESX, ESXi, Server, Workstation, as well as Player. So right now we're in the Task Administrator. This is basically where you can create tasks, set up settings, your options, that kind of thing. I've created a task for today's video. So we're just going to open this up. We're going to right click and go to Edit Steps. And now what's going to happen is it's going to open up into what we call Task Builder. With the Task Builder open, you'll see that over here on the left, you've got all your available actions. You've, over here, you've got your workspace. And then down here, you've got your variables, your outputs. This is essentially your debug screen. So let's take a look at some of the VMware functionality. To do that, we're going to come over here to Available Actions. And we're just going to type in VMware. We've broken up the functionality of VMware into two different parts. The first is the VM operations. VM operations deals more with interacting with a specific virtual machine. So here you've got the ability to power on, power off, list running virtual machines, list registered virtual machines, as well as interacting with the snapshots, being able to create, delete, revert, and list. So now let's close this, and next we'll look at the next part, the guest OS operations. Guest OS operations deals more with interacting with the OS on that virtual machine. So here you've got the ability to log in, log out, as well as move files from your local machine to that virtual machine, as well as getting a listing of directories, getting a listing of files, interacting with the processes, being able to run programs and scripts on the virtual machine. There's a lot of functionality here. So you know what, let's close this, and why don't we work with an example for both. Let's first look at VM operations. So what we need to do here is we'll drag over a step. And notice as you select this drop down, you'll see this connection. The first thing you need to do with VM operations is you need to open a connection to that particular workstation or server or whatnot. So under host type, you can select what you want. So you've got VMware server, workstation, server 2.0 for ESX, ESXi, as well as VMware player. In our demonstration, we're just going to select workstation. So we'll click OK. And notice how that opens a first step here. And basically, this is the session name for that connection. Now that we've got that connection open, we need to actually do something with it. So what we want is we want to get a listing of all the currently running virtual machines. So we'll come down here, select list of virtual machines. And then notice how inside my connection, because I've made it session based, inside here, this was the first session name. And then notice how that's automatically populated inside here. So now when I get this list, I need to store it somewhere. So inside this, I'm going to give it the name DS list. And this will just be a table that stores that information. So we'll click OK. And then now that we've opened it, we've gotten the listing as a good habit, we should always remember to just close it as well. So what we'll do is we'll drag over one more step and we'll select this and we'll come down here to disconnect. OK, now let me drag over my VM workstation. As you can see here, I've got currently one machine running, this PM Agent 1. So now let's drag this over here. Now if I run these three steps, basically we should get the exact same results. So I'm going to come over here to the blue circle, and as you'll see, there's different run options. I can run everything, run selected, run from a certain step, and so forth. I'm just going to do a run all. And so what it's going to do is it's going to run through, get a listing of everything, and remember that data set that we had created earlier. If I right-click on this and I go to Inspect, what you'll see here is there's currently one element. This is the agent, that PM agent one that I had. And this is its current power state, it is suspended, the current state, and so forth. Okay, so now let's close this one and then build in some further logic. So now that we have the list of running virtual machines, we have to basically shut them down one by one in that data set. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of our logic operators. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna come to something called loop data set, which is right here. Let me drag this over. And basically what I need to do is just specify the data set name that I wanted to loop through. So I wanted to go through this list of my VMs and kind of shut them down one thing at a time. Let's drag that down. And what we'll do now is we'll say, okay, we'll go back to VMware. And inside VM operations, we'll drag it in between the loop because we wanted to go through each element. We'll come down here and we'll come to power off. And now it's going to ask us for this virtual ma machine path. Now, again, I can specifically browse to each one, but because I already have that list of running VMs, I can just use that list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this percent sign, which brings up our expression builder. And then from here, I'm just going to pass in the path name, which is the path to that particular virtual machine. I'll click insert. And then again, because my session is session based, I'm going to use this VM session. I'll click OK. And so basically now what it's going to do is it's going to get the listing here. It's going to go through that list and power off each one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all of this. It's going to get the listing of the VMs. Now it's going to power it off. 
Now, as you can see, as, as I drag this over, this is again my workstation, and now you'll notice that PM Agents, it's been shut down. All right, so next what we'll do is let's power this guy back up. Let's get that out of the way. And then what we'll do is let's uh, disable all of this. So what we're going to take a look at now is how we work with guest OS operations. For guest OS operations, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer a file from my local machine to the VM. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, drag over the guest OS, and now we're going to again select connect. And notice now under your host type, this is again different. So we're going to select workstation. And notice now we have this thing called guest credentials. Basically, these are the login information that you need to provide your username and your password so the software can log into the virtual machine. So here, we'll need to specify the path. So we'll select this guy right here, this VMX. And now we'll just put in our username and our password. Here we go. So now we'll click OK. And notice now we have our first step here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag over another guest operations. And what we want to do now is we want to specify a copy file. So down here, we'll select copy file. And now you can choose a direction, whether or not you want to have the file go from the host to the guest or from the guest to the host. So in our case, we want to take a file from my local machine and move it to the virtual machine. So what we'll do is let's specify a folder on my local machine. So we'll just go to my desktop. And why don't we just pick this dummy file right here, this text file that I have. And now what we want to do is we also want to specify where it's going to go on the virtual machine. So let me bring over workstation again. And with the folder I wanted to move it to is this test transfer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this path right here. All right, so what we'll do is now we'll just paste it right here. And then now we'll just give it whatever file name we want. So we want to call this dummy txt. And then again, if we expand our connections, we're going to keep it session-based, so we're going to keep it simple. So we'll click OK. So now we've connected. We've copied the file over from our local machine to the virtual machine. Now the last thing, again, we need to do is to disconnect. So what we'll do is we'll come down here, disconnect, and just close that session. So we'll click OK. And then so now what we do, we're going to run these three. So we'll click Run. So it's connecting to the guest OS, it's copying to the file, and then now it's disconnecting. And now if we bring over this, you'll see that the file's been moved from my desktop into this virtual machine, into this folder that I specified here. So as you can see, there's a lot of functionality with VMware. You can easily interact with snapshots, with the VMs themselves, or even the guest operating systems on those VMs. In addition to that, you can also interact with the 500 plus actions that Automate has directly built in and integrate these with your VMware processes. And this also works with all of our triggering abilities to schedule, to file monitor, and so forth. We hope that you have found this informative and we look to hear from you soon.